Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization, as always, here with Ethan Suplee, actor, thespian, uh, modern day Superman, really. Renaissance man, huh? 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 <laughs> and of course, none, the one, the only, big ass arms having, Jared Feather. Folks, today we're gonna do something a little bit differently. Jared Feather is actually coaching Ethan as his body composition coach. Gotta fly. That Flies are scary. Fly I never know what kind of insect it is and I always like default to be. <laughs> so Jared is Ethan's body composition coach. He's trying to get Ethan as jacked and lean as possible. He does his diet. He does his training. And an interesting thing came up as Ethan is kind of gearing up for a final fat loss mesocycle here, pretty high fatigue state. He's coming off some active rest deload kind of situation. And this is a really good opportunity for us to get, get the fuck out of my face, fly. <laughs> this is a really good opportunity for us to talk through a little bit about how to start a mesocycle. Cause a bunch of our videos are fun, but they're end of mesocycle videos. And he explicitly say like, this is how you train to last. Cause it's hard. It's super tough. You get to push it. Charlie throws up, Ethan dies. <laughs> but today Ethan's reborn. We're going to talk you through, and Jared is going to take the lead on this one. Talk you through how Jared expert, super science coach works with one of his best clients, as far as getting the job done exactly how you're supposed to on how to start a week of training, start a month of training, make sure you're easing in, picking the movements correctly and not killing yourself right off the front end. Folks, I've blabbed way more than enough. Jared Feather, take us away. Awesome. Yeah, so as you mentioned, most of the videos that you've seen are us kind of just messing people up really bad. And I've been getting a lot of questions about that too. Like how come every single session you guys do is super hard? And I'm just like, uh, they're really not. I think you're just kind of making conjecture off of these videos. But what we're doing with Ethan today, as he mentioned, we are coming off of a deload slash Ethan was traveling a little bit. So he uh, just kind of, it was more of an active rest, kind of a two week period of maintenance where we, I was like, hey, don't worry about it, you're traveling, maintain your body weight, and then we'll get to hard training again later. So we're moving into about the, this will be t the week 10 through 15 mark of dieting down, which is about as much as I'm gonna push Ethan uh, until he reaches his total fat loss goal. So by the end of this mesa cycle, he's gonna uh, be at the very end of the fat loss phase and we're gonna be good to go. But the easing in for this mesa cycle, we're gonna be starting at about three reps in reserve. Uh, the sets are gonna be slightly higher than last mesa cycle since we are hypocaloric. So if we started at like, let's say six sets per body part last time, it's about seven or eight sets per body part this time. Plus there are some intensity techniques added in, stuff like giant sets you're gonna see today. I think there's a superset thrown into the session. It's all mapped out already. I sent it to him last week. He's ready to go. He's very, very anxious to get started with training since he's been kind of off for two weeks. Um, we're gonna modify a couple exercises since we're in a, a gym that doesn't really have too many machines. Smith bench is gonna be stuff for flat bench, which will be the first exercise. It'll be about two or three sets. Again, three reps in the tank. We're gonna move to some uh, dumbbell flat bench. That'll be an intensity technique, which you get to see. We can explain that later. And uh, we're not gonna murder him today. It's gonna be more of a Yay, intro week to don't training. Don't you celebrate. You guys exhausted yourselves on Bart Juan yesterday. I feel very <laughs> sick. Bart's dead. The yeah. Bart is gone. Yeah. I'll let you know when to rack it. You let me, t yes, because I don't know what three reps in reserve really looks like. One. The balls at the bottom, let's go. There you go. Two. Three. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Great. Keep going. Six. There you go. Seven. You got one more. Perfect. Excellent. That's great. Three in reserve right there. Yep. There you go. Jared and I, the way we train in Charlie is we probably start a mesocycle less intensely than most people think. Yeah. And we end it more intensely than more people think. Yeah. Because we love that ease in and that, that slow ride up. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like our whole training philosophy is start with what you're really just easily capable of doing. That's a challenge and stimulative. It'll get you mildly sore, you'll yep. get a pump from it. And then you just every week add a little bit of weight to the bar, add a rep. If the volume indicators say you add a set or take one away, and then towards the end, we're doing usually a lot more volume, sometimes just a little more, but almost every set is super close to failure or to failure. And, you know, it's the entire time you get high quality training because yeah. people have this debate about, um, you know, should you train really, really, really hard, like be a hardcore fucking warrior, or should you train really, really e easy just to get the easy gains, but you're a fucking pussy. We say yes to both yeah. right. and then also to the middle ground. So we just work from one to the other, deal it and repeat. I You're can't, both, right? right. I can't refute that as a good practice. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And like you said earlier, you've been enjoying easing into the higher volume. I fucking love it. And I will say before, when I was trying to do progressive overload on my own, which I was doing, certainly, I, I don't think I, I think I was middling it too much mm -hmm. on both ends. I wasn't starting low enough and I wasn't working high. A lot of people do that. So I was like, my window was smaller. Yeah. And this way, by the time we're done, because we've done a bunch of cycles oh. of this, I am fucking fatigued. Yep. But, but also when you start, you get the great, easy injury free gains, but you don't have to push yourself super early. Yeah. You know, um, I think, I think there's two really big reasons why people usually middle ground it. Reason one is they don't want to sort of pussy out on the front end. Yeah. They're like, man, this is fucking hard. Cause you know, you're deloaded, right? And then you're like, fuck it, I want to go. Yeah, for sure. And then <laughs> when, when the you were through text yeah. all week, like, right. I'm fucking ready to drain. The deload is <laughs> fucking the worst week for sure. of the whole thing. It's yep, so yep. But then after deload, you go too hard. And then as you build from there, two or three weeks out from your peak, you're like, man, add a rep and a set and some weight. Fuck that, that yeah. shit is hard. So it requires like a real presence to know, to just be patient to start early and then turn the shit up like you never thought possible towards the end. Yeah. And it's tough. But at the end of the day, I think training is like uh, something you have to do well, not something that your instincts necessarily drive you to do well. You know, it's just something that has to be done on, uh, I don't know about willpower, willpower, but in intent. You know, like I'm here to do a specific thing. Sometimes I won't really love that thing, but it's the right thing that has to get done. So again, we talked about the intensity techniques that we're going to add into this MESA cycle. One of those that we include oftentimes is called a giant set. So we've been dieting for about 10 weeks. By the end of this MESA cycle, you can be pretty glycogen depleted, very fatigued from that long hypocaloric period. What giant sets allow you to do is to get a rep achievement. You do the same normal rest through the set. Um, you just take as many sets as you need to get the rep achievement. So if he does 60 reps this week with the weight, he does 70 next week. It doesn't matter if he rep matches. And because the glycogen is gonna be coming down, pumps are gonna be fading, he's probably not gonna rep match each set individually. But since the total reps are going up, it's going to make the volume increase that way. So it's a really good, uh, kind of like the mile rep sets you see us do, the supersets again, and the giant sets. These are really good things to add in so that way you can get effective reps still and you are able to increase the volume load over time during that very end of the hypocaloric period, maybe even toward the end of massing phases. Six, good. Seven. Oh yeah. So you're at 32, you're at 30. Nice slow eccentric. Good. That's it. Perfect. I feel very uh, blessed. Whatever fucking hashtag blessed. Hashtag blessed to have the opportunity to like train with you guys. Yeah. Jared has truly, truly changed my training. But I know, like prior to that, a lot of my information did come from the internet, and it was a lot of just like watching people and what they did. Mm -hmm. And. A lot of dudes are doing what looks to be incomplete. Yeah, partial reps yeah. with super heavy weights. Yeah. So that's an interesting question because a lot of people who are going hashtag science based would say those, those, those guys are idiots and they're doing it all wrong. It's not all wrong, 
the primary driver of hypertrophy is tension, and you can apply a shitload of tension that way. The thing is, if they did do full range of motion, they would get maybe like 5% better hypertrophy because they would be targeting, yeah, so they'd be targeting more of the muscle fiber and some of the parts of the fiber don't activate fully when you just do this range. So you get a little bit better hypertrophy and you think, okay, so it's just a little difference. However, first of all, the systemic fatigue would be way lower yeah. so they could increase the length of their mesocycles or increase the number of amount of load or sets that they add. Yeah. And that would give them even another maybe 5% extra hypertrophy over the long run, not the short run. And here's Definitely the real big kicker. Decrease like career span injuries. Yes. And connective that's tissue the damage. One. And so damage what you see like with that. the guys on Instagram that are amazing and jacked is an example of something in statistics called survivorship bias or 100%. survivor bias. You only see the guys that succeed. You remember that one guy who was going to be big and tore his quads? Of course you don't remember that guy. Because <laughs> nobody fucking does. And I, I know some of them because they work up and coming yeah. and then they hurt themselves, right? There's, There's a, a known guy, keep his name out of it, who tore both his quads on the hack squat doing like a double on a hack squat. Who the fuck does a double close on a hack squat instead of two? Too. Super close to competition because that's when all the drugs hit and you feel really like Superman, but your joints and connective tissues are like, eh, right? super dehydrated. So he tore both his quads, but he's just never the same again. He's still a phenomenal bodybuilder, better than I'll ever be. But he could have been so much more if he just didn't do that. Right. The thing is those guys on Instagram that are super human and amazing, you see them in, and you know, look, if they stop posting because they get hurt, they're out of the algorithm. You never see them again. Yeah. They're out of the filter. So then new guys come in that are still not hurt. It's like, uh, it's like if, if this is a super crude analogy, but if it's like, like gladiators from Roman times had Instagrams, like they don't post when they're dead. So you'd right. be like, these gladiators have all of it figured out. They're immortal. Because right. the only guys on Instagram never die, right? Yeah. So it's that sort of thing. So as a lifter and the way Jared and I look at it is looking forward, like I'm a guy who's just getting into training or just trying to do right. Looking forward at the problem of I, survivorship bias, I can't afford because there's only one of me. Yeah. What do I do to enhance my results a little bit, but enhance my longevity a lot? And that is full range of motion training. Yeah. Can you get away with doing the bullshit? Maybe. I don't want to put my money on maybe. I want to put my money on the highest probability. Right. Does, really does cool. that make sense? So most when they're doing the, it, it's not wrong, but it's not wise in the long term. Yeah. yeah, and most of like the older bodybuilders, they're watching the guys who are slightly younger than, than them be like, oh, I wish I'd known this stuff back in my early 20s and 30s. People like Dexter Jackson are looking at those guys like, well, yeah, I've been doing that the entire time. That's why he's 50 years old on stage. Right. And he's like placing third at the Olympian shit still. Yeah. He's been doing this stuff like how we've been doing it, just machine, full range of motion, like utilize, you know, intensity techniques, closer to shows, things like that. Never doing and crazy ego smart. shit. Yeah, yep. no super heavy loads and things like that if, if you don't need to, especially close to contests. Sure. So those guys are probably the guys that I would look more to. to yep. But they're not exciting. Dexter Jackson's Instagram videos are like him it's doing this. And you're like, okay, he's great looking, but he's not fired up like crazy. He's not yelling at 800 pounds. He's no. still in one piece. No. Right. All right, guys. Jared had to go use the restroom, so I'll intro this exercise. Ethan has three sets of push-ups with a close grip, but it's only 30 seconds break between, which really drives the metabolites. It allows you to have to do a little bit less volume, which would typically be less growth, but the extra drive of metabolites, given that it's after we've done a lot of our compound heavy loading stuff, can be a benefit in the context of a total program. So 30 seconds rest. And for Ethan, 30 seconds means his lungs really aren't a limiting factor. His central nervous system really isn't. His local musculature is because it's already pre-fatigued at this point. So let's get into it. One more, one more. Good. That's yep. it, that was great. 12. Good stuff, Ethan. I'll let you know when to go again. One more. Good stuff. Good. See how you feel at four. Good, done. Stuff. Good stuff, man. Nice. That's it. That was hard. So 
So we're doing a mile rep set of push downs, just one set here. Basically, it's gonna allow us to push relatively close to failure uh, a couple times in a single set. He's going to perform 15 to 20 on the first, going three, two RAR, then he's gonna take a very brief pause, do a couple more back to three RAR, and we're gonna do that twice. So there's gonna be three mile reps in a single set. 14, good stuff. Control that last part of the eccentric too. There you go. Chest up. Ready? Go. Four or six more. Big chest up. There you go. Good stuff. Yep. Last one here. Good. All right. Check it out again. Another three to five. Go ahead. Two control the eccentric. Last one. Good yeah. stuff. Good stuff. Awesome. How do I feel? That was hard. Next exercise for Ethan is going to be dumbbell curls. Uh, Ethan has had some elbow issues in the past. We were curling sort of more behind the body because it was very comfortable for him. Um, these curls seem to be okay for him. So we're gonna be doing pretty strict dumbbell curls out in front. The weight's not too heavy and the weight usually is the issue for Ethan. So he's really strict curls holding the outside of the dumbbells. Rep range is gonna be anywhere from 15 to 20. Let's see if you can gauge three RIR this time. This is textbook technique, Ethan. Amazing. Is that four? But can't count. Stay upright. Good. Let's go, let's go. One more. There you go. Nice. Good stuff. It's a, you got big ass arms. Yeah, man. you really do, man. I Fuck. don't agree with you. I feel like shit standing That's okay, you. I'm the expert. There you have it. That was a uh, week one of the mesocycle style of training session that, uh, so that's kind of how yours might look. That's how Ethan specifically looked. Uh, you saw we did Mostly push, a little bit of triceps, and then a little bit of biceps. Ethan trains roughly four to five times a week, so we sprinkle in biceps, lateral delts, things like that three to four times a week as far as the frequency goes. But uh, relatively moderate RAR, so three in the tank each set, and then a couple sets per exercise, really. But good stuff. That was awesome. To win a free copy of your very own RP Physique template and one full year of using the RP Diet app, make sure to like this video and comment RP App Contest in the comments below.